all eyes on whether the world is going to be able to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. And by all accounts at this point in time, we are off track on nearly every single one of them. There is an energy crisis that the world is currently dealing with on account of the Russia-Ukraine war. And the question now is, what will that mean for the climate transition. Joining me now to discuss all of that and more is Suman Sina. Suman, many thanks for joining me here on CNBC TV 18. Let me address that issue with you. Uh, at this point in time, health crisis though starting to recede, an energy crisis which is front and centre, a food crisis, an inflation crisis. Uh, you know, is the climate transition at risk? Well, you know, Shireen, you actually touched upon a very interesting topic. The world is a pretty uncertain place right now. Uh, you know, the kind of uh, increases in interest rates and inflation that we are seeing uh, comes actually once in like 20, 25 years. So that is actually already a very disruptive change that is upon us. Uh, commodity prices have gone up massively high, uh, causing all sorts of problems. And then of course, on top of that, now you have the Russia-Ukraine war that is going on. And we don't know how that is going to play out. We also don't even know how high the Fed will have to increase interest rates what the consequential impact on the currencies is going to be. So all of that is leading to a fairly uncertain environment to begin with. Now, on top of that, um, particularly now with the war that is going on, uh, obviously energy is in a very, very difficult place because Europe is now suddenly having to find almost 40% of its energy from somewhere else. Yeah. And that then is going to create a ripple effect uh, the impact of which is going to be felt and is being felt all the way across the rest of the world in various markets, whether it's gas, whether it's coal, whether it's oil. Um, and on top of that, of course, every country is trying to make sure that they have, uh, you know, a deeper and better focus on energy security and so on as well. And therefore, it's causing a lot of changes right now in the energy transition, which is already creating its own disruption in the energy market. So all of this is just adding to this, you know, this whole global macro this energy crisis is really making the whole energy transition even more complex than it was earlier. Mm -hmm. So we're in a bit of a very interesting spot right now. And I think everybody has to think very carefully about how to navigate through this, both countries as well as corporates. So let's talk about what corporations can do at this point in time. And what's the impact, for instance, for a company like yours in this mix of uncertainty? Uh, you know, are you starting to see budgets being cut, spending being cut as well? Actually, quite the contrary, Shireen. We, I find that, um, uh, you know, this whole issue of climate change is now moving away from just governments dealing with it uh, through forums like the COP and so on. And it's really becoming a lot more broad-based. And corporates now are really, really beginning to get very much more sensitive to this whole issue. And they are now looking at their own decarbonization journeys and what they need to do. And large corporations, of course, we had the global tech firms uh, coming earlier to this whole situation, but now shipping companies, steel companies, cement companies, aviation companies are all thinking about how they need to move forward on decarbonization. Uh, so there's a very actually strong groundswell now that is beginning to emerge, which is leading to some really interesting conversations for companies like ours about how we can actually help address the decarbonization requirements of large global companies, uh, of course in India, but also potentially outside. Um, and so that's causing us to look at different kind of technology-based solutions, different markets, different kinds of customers. Um, and I, I, my feeling is that a few years from now, uh, you'll have corporates becoming much bigger customers uh, for people like us than potentially even governments are at this point in mm. time. You know, how much worse is it going to get before we start to see some degree of stability? Mm -hmm. uh, given given the Russia-Ukraine situation at this point in time, and you know, there is no one that can really fill the vacuum for Europe uh, in light of what's happened with Russia. So what are you hearing here when you speak with both corporate leaders as well as political leaders? Uh, and you know, who would have thought that we would be looking at coal making a comeback at this mm -hmm. point in time? But is that now going to be a reality that the world is going to have to deal with? Yeah, you know, actually this whole energy crisis is not good for climate change at all, as I think as a, as a first step. Because, you know, when, when people in Europe have a situation where uh, as I said, 30-40% of the energy supplies are suddenly having to get resourced from elsewhere. Uh, it's going to impact the industrial base. It's also going to lead to a lot of cold homes in the winter. They'll have to look at energy rationing. Uh, at the same time, the prices of energy have gone up dramatically, almost 10 times, 15 times. Price caps are being imposed. Windfall tax are going to get levied by European uh, governments. 
So it's going to lead to a very uncertain environment here in, not here, but obviously in Europe. And uh, it's going to take many years to sort that problem out. Now, I think the longer term solution is still not apparent. Uh, what is going to replace Russian gas? Is it going to be coal? Uh, maybe only up to a point because there, are, there aren't that many coal uh, plants uh, in service any longer. Nuclear is a possibility, right? And uh, of course, then renewables will take time. But it's certainly something that is being ramped up as well. So I think it's going to take a few years to find solutions. Um, and unfortunately, you're right. Coal, gas will therefore make a comeback. And that's not really good for the climate because ultimately, all of these are going to lead to investments that will have to you know, generate yeah. returns over a longer period of time. And how European governments deal with that is something that we'll have to wait and see. Mm. But what it is leading to actually is Europe is now taking the view that, look, we have to solve our problem. Yeah. And if that means that we take a step back on the climate front, then so be it. Mm. And that's mm. not really the best step forward. So one hopes that they find solutions which are going to be not climate unfriendly. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about things back home at this mm -hmm. point in time. And of course, you know, the progress on the renewable path continues. Uh, you've had some uh, big milestones that the company has managed to achieve through the course of the year. How does the domestic market look today? You know, it looks pretty good, I would say, honestly speaking. There are a number of changes that have happened. Of course, uh, India's power demand, as you know, has picked up dramatically this year. Uh, we're looking at 6 or 7% growth. Uh, hopefully that normalizes out to 5% plus even over the next, de next decade. And therefore there is going to be a lot of power uh, generation requirement. And as you know, the government of course has, has uh, you know, really pointed us in the direction of renewables to fill that gap. And so renewables they will therefore uh, you know, really uh, become quite a lot more, I think, dominant as, uh, you know, in terms of incremental capacity addition. Round the clock power is going to become a very important trend that is going to emerge as, as Discom start trying to firm up their grid management. Uh, so, the, you know, solutions around wind and solar and storage, that's going to become very important. Uh, at the same time, companies are actually also now buying. And um, the interesting thing is that over the last year or so, almost a quarter of our total new PPAs are actually with companies directly. Mm -hmm. And it's now become 10% of our total portfolio of about 13,000 uh, megawatts. So it's actually growing quite substantially. So it's really good to see that. Um, and uh, I think between all of these things that are happening, uh, continued growth, growth in sort of in, in a different manner, it's going to lead to, uh, I think, uh, continued explosion in India. The one other thing that I would say is that the government has come out with these late payment surcharge rules where they are now really putting pressure on discoms at the state level to start paying up or face curtailment of access to the exchanges, yeah. which is really causing them to we become... We just saw that happen. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so that is really causing discoms to start paying up a lot better. Mm. Uh, and I think if they are able to hold the ground on that and with the coming of the new Electricity Act, hopefully it will get passed this winter. It's very, very important for that to happen um, because that really looks at reforms on the discom side as well. Uh, along with a whole bunch of other things. And so if between all of these different things that the central government is doing, there is a real possibility for us to have a much stronger and healthier uh, distribution sector and therefore the overall power sector. Mm -hmm. So I would say things are moving in the right direction right now in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the outlook in terms of pricing? Uh, what's the trajectory looking like? So, you know, auctions um, uh, haven't happened that much in the last mm -hmm. few months partly because the government is trying to sell a lot of the old PPAs that had been bid out, which they've now done successfully, so we'll see a lot more auctions uh, coming up. I think tariff will have to go up on account of a few factors. Number one, GST, of course, has been increased from 5% to 12%, so that itself is going to have an impact. Secondly, uh, module prices globally have gone up because of commodity prices, wind turbine costs have also gone up. So as a result of all of those factors, you'll probably see tariffs go up a little bit, but of course we'll have to wait and see for the auctions to actually happen for the price discovery to work its way through. But I wouldn't be surprised if you actually see tariffs go up to three rupees or, or even higher than that, compared to the two early twos that they got to for solar particularly, uh, let's say a couple of years ago. So and that's what's going to happen. But look, all said and done, it's still going to be much cheaper than yeah. coal-based power. So I think it's still a win-win for everybody. So let me ask you about what the outlook is now in terms of uh, the next milestone that you're hoping to clock. You know, Sharon, to be very honest with you right now, um, you know, there's so much going on in our sector uh, in terms of uh, new technologies, new markets, uh, as I said, corporates coming to the party. So I think it's, it's, it's actually very exciting. 
So the next milestone for us really, of course, we want to cross 10,000 megawatts as soon as possible. That will probably happen in the next year, year and uh, perhaps even less than that. Uh, hopefully, we'll be the first company to cross 10,000 megawatts of installed capacity in India. So I think that will be a bit world is here as well. So lots of good conversations happening. Uh, and, What's the mood uh, like on India? You know, the mood on India actually is very positive, to be very honest, because obviously everybody's focused on the Europe problem, how to solve that. I think India is kind of like a little stable island in all of the uncertainty that is going on. I think the government's targets are very well accepted and recognized and appreciated. Our NDCs have been given, which are very positive as well. So I think in general, India is seen as being a big part of the positive side of the story as far as climate change is concerned. Well, uh, thanks very much, Suman, for joining us here and speaking with us. Appreciate your time.